this morning, I uh, left behind my uh, uh, device to put up on the screen, uh, but tonight I have it, and I uh, wanted to, uh, after we read the scripture, I want to uh, show you all just a little bit about what's going on uh, with Paul and the direction that he happens to be uh, going in and uh, some of the things that we'll begin to see. Uh, we recognize to begin with that as Paul started out on this missionary journey uh, that he was going back to the churches that they had been to. But in that, they... Uh, they suddenly found themselves leaving behind the trail they were taking to go on another direction that God had, was sending them on. They, uh, they went back to look at those churches. They actually did go uh, to a couple of them as God began to direct them in another direction. And so they ended up in uh, the city of Philippi and we saw a church established there which was a new church. It was in a new direction. It was different than they had done on their first missionary journey. And of course, we, uh, we've we been looking at two or three others. But as we look tonight, uh, I want you to, uh, to read along with me in Acts 17. We're going to read the first uh, 15 verses, and that's approximately what we're going to cover tonight. The so Bible tells us then in Acts chapter 17, beginning at verse one, it says, Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy <coughs> took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren under the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. We've been talking about the, uh, the second missionary journey. Now, as we look at that, I want you to look at a couple of things. To begin with, I want to kind of show you. I know it's, it's a little distant from you, but maybe you can see just a little bit of it. Okay, now, right here is where Paul was born. That's Tarsus. 
Okay. Now, his uh, his his friend, the one who ended up coming to get him after after some years, uh, brought him down to Antioch. Now that's right in here. Okay. That's the Antioch that was the first of the Antiochs. There was more than one Antioch that we talked about as we were going through the first missionary journey. We saw him uh, uh, visiting uh, a different place that was also called Antioch, but uh, as we recognize, there's a lot of Bereas in the world. We got one in our scriptures tonight, okay? There's, there's a, a lot of different cities and places that have the same kind of name. And, uh, you know, there are different Caesareas. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, so when we begin looking at those things, we need to kind of figure out where we are in relationship to everything else. And so that's what this map is really all about here tonight. Now, those, the black marks that go up through here speak about his first missionary journey. That's the one that we have already concluded. We went all the way through, okay? Now we're making the trip with this green one. Now, uh, when we finally get finished with the green one, we're going to be in. We're going to end up way down uh, down here in in, uh, uh, in Caesarea. But that's not where we're at right now. Okay. Now, we went up through here. We went. We talked about Iconium, uh, uh, and uh, these are the places that they were. Now, that's you can see that other other Antioch. Okay, and we're going on up through here, and we come to Troas. Now we went across the, the that strait uh, in the in the, uh, the lake, the water, and we found ourselves at Philippi this morning. We we were talking about. It. We went up through, uh, so you can see it's a pretty good little distance up through there. Now, Paul wanted when he was down here to go across this other direction, uh, to go into Asia, but God had other things in mind. So he sent him up into the European areas that we're talking about up in here. And so now, uh, see, he talks about the Mesopotamian, uh, 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 the, the dream that he had was all, all up in this direction. And so now we've come down and we're looking at uh, Thessalonica and we're also going to be visiting Berea, which is right in here, before we go any further. So you see the journey that we're talking about. And, and, and you know, a lot of this, so you see the journey that we're talking about. And, and, and you know, a lot of this comes up with uh, just being talked about in a sentence or two. Uh, there's a couple of things that we need to recognize and understand about these as as we go as we go through this. Now, you know, Paul and Silas uh, at Philippi, the gospel entered into Europe. That's the thing that we're talking about. The Roman colony, uh, Roman citizens, a jailer got saved. That was what we talked about this morning, and it was a very significant moment. It was a very significant thing to occur as as God began to build His kingdom in the area that we're talking about. And Philippi became a thriving church. We recognize that as, as Paul writes the letter to them and the different things that have to do with that. He writes letters to some of these others as well, and he's not the only one that writes letters that, and, that we're talking about in some of these areas that we're, uh, that we're looking at. And I, I know that was a little bit difficult for you to see, but you can you kind of get just a little bit of picture of it as I'm uh, as I'm, I'm talking to you about uh, the way these uh, particular things uh, were taking place. Now, uh, Paul, as he came, he came to uh, Thessalonica. He went through Amphipolis and Apollonia, and he came to Thessalonica, and there was a synagogue of the Jews. Now, remember what we talked about this morning about a synagogue. We recognized that there was no synagogue in Philippi because they didn't have ten men to start one. Okay, you have to have at least ten. Uh, but in Thessalonica, they, that was big enough. There was enough Jews that were there. They, were, uh, they had a synagogue, and they worshiped there all the time. Now, what takes place and happens in the synagogue was that they, they 
stood up and they uh, and and uh, read the scriptures and they sat down to teach. That's the way it worked. That's what happened as Jesus uh, taught in the synagogues as he was uh, traveling around Galilee and, and Nazareth and uh, and uh, all of the places, Capernaum, every place that he went. And that's uh, that was kind of the way that services were conducted. We know how they're generally conducted. I, you know, since this pandemic started, we do things just a little bit different than what we used to. Sing a couple of songs, take up an offering, sing another song or two, and then and then, then we have a special, and then we go into the sermon. But uh, things have changed just a little bit. But that's kind of the way that a lot of services tend to occur. That's, that's kind of, but, so they had their order of service. You know, they had it, uh, and it tended to be that way. When they left the place where they were, and they went to another place, they started their synagogue. They had a service very much the same kind of way. So he went there, and uh, and we read about Thessalonica in, uh, in the book of Thessalonians. And, and so we understand a little bit about how Paul dealt with things in uh, Thessalonica. It was a little different than what he did in some other places. Uh, you all know what Paul's uh, uh, profession was before he started preaching. What did he do? Anybody know? What did he do while he was preaching? He was a tent maker, okay? And according to Thessalonians, while he was in Thessalonica, you know what he did during the week? He built tents. Three weeks, we know what he did other than that. Three weeks, every Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue and he reasoned with the people there. When the discussion started, Paul was discussing with them about the Messiah. Now, you know the way people tend to do things so often, and I'm afraid sometimes it includes really good Christians as well as others. When we read the Bible, well, you know when I was a kid, there was a, quite a time when I... And the way I read the Bible was I opened it up and read whatever happened to be right there and hoped it wasn't Psalms 119. Okay? But Psalms 119 is so close to the middle of the Bible. When you open it up, it's liable to be there. You know, it's okay to do that. It's okay to have your favorite scriptures. It's okay to have certain ones that mean a lot to you. I certainly do. Proverbs uh, three uh, is one of those places, you know, where where it speaks about uh, trusting the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him; He shall direct thy paths. Philippians and the Scripture in it that I absolutely love is, is uh, chapter four, verse eight. It says, "Whatsoever things are true." Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report. Now there's another one in there, okay? Whatsoever things are, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember every word. And then it says, if there be any virtue, Virtue means a conformity to a standard of right. Or there be any praise. Think on these things. He says there's some things we ought to be thinking about. And I like that. He said that to Philippians, who we just talked about this morning in Philippi. It's okay to have scriptures that mean a great deal to you. But you don't base all of doctrine on your favorite scriptures. Some doctrine comes from areas that may be difficult, that may be hard to deal with. Well, the Jewish people had a tendency to cling to certain verses because what it meant to them was that someday Israel would be on top again that someday Jerusalem would be the place where everything came to, 
that the Messiah would rule the world. And all the things they said and looked at and the scriptures that brought that out were true. Someday, Jesus will indeed be King of Kings and Lord of Lords in every situation. Someday, He will rule and evil and sin will be gone. The Bible teaches us that. But while they were studying those scriptures that spoke about a king and all his glory, they left out scriptures like Psalms 22 that spoke about, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That spoke of the suffering Messiah. That spoke of the pain that he would go through. That told us about things that dealt with his death and his burial and his resurrection. They, uh, they didn't like Isaiah 53. And some of them decided that there was two Messiahs. There was one that was the son of David and one that was the son of Joseph. And the son of David would reign and the son of Joseph would suffer. And they got all kinds of things that they dealt with in that way. And if anybody tried to take the scriptures and reason with them to bring those scriptures together, they didn't deal with it very well. And so they didn't see and they didn't allow themselves to see and so they fought against it. So Paul reasoned with them in Thessalonica in the synagogue for three weeks. He was there longer than that, but those were the amount of time that it speaks about here in this situation. And in the city, he didn't take anything from anybody. He built tents to make his living. And when they decided that they weren't going to change his mind and he wasn't going to change theirs, they got them a bunch of guys together and they stirred up the people. And so they went to Jason's house. Jason was... What, you know, when they went to a city, you know what Jesus told his disciples when he sent them out two by two, he said, Wherever, when you go to a city, you, whatever house you find yourself in, just stay there. Uh, Jason was uh, one that had been one to the Lord through their ministry. And he was staying there. And for some reason or another, Paul and Silas happened to be out doing errands or something. I don't know what they were doing, but when these guys came, they were going to grab Paul and Silas, and instead they got a hold of Jason. So they drug him to the court, and they made a very interesting statement. They said, these people that have turned the world upside down have come thither also. Now the truth is, the world got turned all upside down sometimes a little earlier than that. Because at one time it was in good shape. But sin entered and it got turned upside down. And everybody looked at things in a crooked kind of way and they looked at it wrong. But these guys came and as they began to preach, they were turning it right side up. That's what was taking place. But in the event, as they came, they... Uh, they were looking for Paul and Silas. They didn't get them. So what they did was, basically, uh, they took security of Jason. And from every in in intent and purpose, that's, that's, that's not... Uh, uh, see, what is it when somebody's in jail and you want to get them out and you pay a little bit of money? Uh, what is bail. it? Bail. Yeah, well, it wasn't bail money exactly. Because basically what this amounted to was... Uh, Jason was to ensure they got out of town. <laughs> Not that they got out of jail. Uh, so in this instance, uh, it was a little situation that was different. And so uh, what we see happening then is uh, that they came and by night, they sent Paul and Silas away. 
Now, Paul had a pretty good sized company, so it wasn't just Paul and Silas. Timothy was with them, Luke was with them, a number of people was with them, and, and uh, so they went on down. Now, you know, it, it, it speaks about that in a rather interesting kind of way, you see, because uh, it looks like that, uh, that is, you know, just a little nice little short walk, okay? Well, a little more than that, okay? Uh, because when you begin to look at these cities, they're, they're some distance apart. Now, their mode of travel was just a little different than ours. You know, when I go to work it in the morning, I, I, I drive a big white Cadillac. <laughs> okay, it don't take me but about, you know, five, six, seven minutes to get there. But if I went the way Paul and Silas was going, it'd take me just a little longer. I'd have to get up kind of early. Because they walked, okay, to walk 30 some miles took a day, at least. Probably take me a lot longer than that, okay? So when they made their trip, uh, the truth is it took them going into these areas from the place that they got out of the boat a uh, good three days, okay? So it took a little while to do that. Uh, it's not, a, not as easy a trip as we might as we might uh, think about. I, uh, somewhere along the line here, I've got notes that tell me how many miles they are from one city to the other, but I'm not real sure exactly uh, where those notes are, because I hadn't really been looking at them while I've been doing this. So, uh, But when he got down to Berea, since they were more noble, now, uh, what that meant was, says when they began to show them the scriptures, they went back home and did something real significant. Something you all ought to do as well. Okay? Pick up your Bible and determine whether or not I'm telling you the truth. Because whoever stand up here, you need to examine the scriptures to see whether or not he's telling you the truth or he's not. And that don't matter who it is that's standing up here. Okay? The scriptures are important. And they need to match up with the scriptures. And they ought to always be something that you do. Search the scriptures. Jesus told the Pharisees and them, he said, search the scriptures, for in them you find, for they testify of me. And you want to know about me? Look, look what God said. And that's always the reality. These are important events. They come to Berea, they are more noble, and they search the scriptures, and as a result of searching the scriptures with an open mind, recognizing that they didn't know everything, so as they searched them, they determined that what Paul and Silas was preaching and telling them was the truth. And as a result of it, they believed, and it said there was a lot of them believed. A lot of Greeks, a lot of women, and a lot of men, a lot of people believed, and a church was established. You see, that's what it's about. So, in that, of course, the devil, he didn't like it. He don't like it a bit when people began to believe and trust in Jesus. And so he does his thing. And all of those Jews that got mad about him preaching about a Messiah that died and rose again, that suffered, that took their sin upon his shoulders, those things they didn't like about a Messiah, they come flying down to where he was at when they heard he was preaching down there. And the next thing you know, they stir up a crowd in Berea not the ones that believed, but those that got real emotional about what was being said in the same way they did back up there in Thessalonica. And the next thing you know, Paul has to take another trip. And it seems like, as we read through this, that he was a little bit like me when I went down to Dallas back when I was just a real young preacher. I went in by night, and I came out by night, and I didn't see none of Dallas. I did see the conference I was in, listened to some singing. Uh, 
But now he usually went in by day. He could see a little bit, I guess. So in the next city, we're going to see him doing a little sightseeing. But we'll do that next Sunday morning, Lord willing. But looking at what we're looking at right now, he headed out by night, leaving behind Silas and Timotheus, who continued to strengthen the brethren, bring them together until those that went with him down to Athens, which is the next place we come to. Sent a letter back saying, get on down here, we got work to do. And so uh, that's what we see happening. But understand what I'm saying to you about what is going on here. As God is moving the gospel right on up through the neighborhoods and the towns, establishing churches, saving souls, changing lives, and all the ways that we've been talking about. That's what the early church was about. It was about reaching people for Christ. It was about establishing a fellowship. It was about bringing them to a place where they could grow and mature Christians, into brethren, into disciples. You see, they did more than just preach the message and win souls. They, they provided discipleship. And the people grew and responded and became. And that's what we're to do. As Christians, we're to become more like Jesus all the time. We're to grow and to mature become what God wants us to be. It's always that way. So, the message didn't change any from this morning as we looked at Philippi and the jailer. The message is still believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and my house because when you get saved it changes your life and your family knows it <laughs> and pretty soon they see the change and they either like it or they don't because the reality is that all your friends that you become a Christian don't necessarily like what happened to you because they you're not doing the things you used to do you're not the same person. You're a new creature. And sometimes they leave you behind. But you'll have a friend that sticks closer than a brother throughout all eternity. One who loves you more than you even understand, love. Who died for you on a cross. Who carried your sins. Who bought your part who when you trust, you have life everlasting. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the words that we find in this book. Words of life, words of truth, words of hope, words that teach us your way, that make us understand you a little bit better, that we may be more like you. Lord, I pray that you'd help us now to put these words in our heart, to hide them there, but not to stay away from the light because we want them brought to our mind when we may be talking to others, but hidden there to help us to overcome the world that you have already overcome. Lord, I just pray that you just touch now those that may be listening wherever they are. And then when they hear the gospel, they trust and believe as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.